The content in this video is mixed with theory and factual information. It is compiled from many different sources. If you haven't seen part one, I highly advise you do so. And also, spoilers. Also, also, CM Games has given me two Steam keys and one quest key to give away. So stay tuned for a special place in the video to get entered into the giveaway and enjoy. As we wake in our room, the UNPSC has given us another task to delve deeper into the radius within Pabieda Factory. The sit rep reads to proceed with our free will missions program, you will have to pass one more validation test. Your mission is to retrieve a tape recorder from the location marked on your map. Note that your enemies are likely to be armored. Using AP rounds and a silencer is highly recommended. This mission is called a probing move. And after looking at the map within our room, we can determine a quicker route to our destination by going through the Balatki village and heading towards the safe house and heading north from there. And here we are met with the largest part of the radius, horizontally and vertically. Following the map, we can quickly meet our destination, a rundown lot with a blue painted building with the normal and armored anomalies roaming outside. At this point, Explore 61 may or may not have AP rounds. If not, this situation can be even more dangerous. As we sneak into the building, we can find our objective on a desk and an ashen figure. The ashen figure says, Well, here in the desk should be safe enough. Ah, it would be great to get such a recorder for Volka too. He's such a music bug. Now, unfortunately, we cannot play the contents of the lost voice recorder. We can only speculate the contents despite the retrieval mission only being a test. The UNPSC so far hasn't misguided us into acquiring information that was not relevant to the free will missions program, which at this point from what we've gathered in the previous video and now is most likely ascertaining to freeing the will and minds of the explorers that have delved into the radius and the inhabitants. As the contents of the tape recorder are mysterious, all we can do is move on. There's not much evidence pointing to anything, unfortunately. And after completing this mission, we get security level three, which will be handy for the next mission. And as we are within the radius, we can make out some of the new anomalies that this place alone introduces. The fragments, mimics, and seekers are capable of wearing armor, which is identified with a visible iridescent and triangular shape covering the bodies of each entity. After encountering the armored entities, eventually these variants will get more common, thus the need for AP. Now the stompers are a large invisible anomaly. It's only identified due to the sound it makes when stepping onto the ground. These anomalies are known for their loud stomping and kicked up dust, and upon contact the stompers will apply large amounts of damage. Despite these anomalies having an invisible presence and being able to hurt you, they cannot be killed and they can go through walls. But what's interesting about these anomalies is the prints they leave behind. The name Stomper would more likely imply two footprints, yet the prints are from large hands. The Scythe anomaly is a ring-like distortion that comes from a center point at regular intervals. It hums in a low tone while going up in pitch as it extends, and as it extends it seems like there's some segments of time being reversed, as there's what looks like rain going back into the atmosphere. And as the anomaly extends and contracts, it can damage you or worse, kill you. Now, after the mission, we come home to Vano, and another page appears in our pack, and it reads, Mom seems to have had a rough day again. Someone stole the tape recorder the staff got for the manager's birthday. The thing was hidden in the factory office. Not the safest place, if you ask me. And so the staff went on arguing whether to call the cops or chip in for another gift until, ta da the boss found out. Yeah, sounds rough enough. From the conversation alone, similar to the previous notes we've gotten, another item has disappeared and another connection is made. Fast forwarding to the next mission, the intrusion. The debrief states you were assigned with a priority mission. Collect the bomb, proceed to the office building, blast the armored door on the first floor. Inside, look for the white case. The site is heavily guarded. Bring powerful firearms, lots of ammo. And as we approach one of the locations for entering the factory's facility, we can see Katya's porcelain figure. Again, she states this. My mother worked at the factory. Long days, what with that commute? She liked it all right, mostly because she got on well with her team. She was a strong woman, 
everyone respected her. She said she didn't want for me to work at a factory or anything like that. She didn't think I was built for it. Too soft, too impressionable. And I got good grades, especially in Russian and literature. So she wanted me to go to university and become a secondary school teacher. I... I liked to read. And I was always helping my classmates with their homework. So I thought that's what I wanted too. Maybe it's still what I want. Do you think I could become a teacher? If we ever leave this place? The mission takes place in the factory site of Pobieda. First and foremost, the explosive must be collected, which is north of the factory. After acquiring the explosive and heading to the factory, you will quickly find out the debrief was accurate. The location is riddled with anomalies and entities. Armored mimics, fragments, spawns, all testing your skills to become the one-man army you need to be. During the beginning of the incursion, we spot another strange anomalous item, similar to the teddy bear clad and white. A flashlight behind the sofa in the second floor of the bridged building to the offices of the factory. I want to discuss these white clad items more near the end of the video, so keep listening and we can discuss the, the significance of these items. But at first glance, we can assume that this is another item affected by the radius or perhaps something a bit more intriguing. Nearing the end of the incursion, we see a steel door with another ash-clad figure gazing upon the door, and the figure states this. Who needed this heavy door here? Is the boss expecting a nuclear attack or something? If this thing stalls, we'll need to use a bomb ourselves to get it opened. <laughs> no need. I reckon the boss will escape through the window. Maybe he's even done it before. The figure clearly tells us that a bomb will get the door opened, along with some information regarding escaping via the window. After placing the explosive, stepping back, the explosion blasts the door down, and as we enter, it seems like your average office, but with our objective inside, a large white case, which if you've scavenged the area before taking the case, it can really slow you down. And after leaving the office, the quickest possible route back to Vanna is taking the eastern road back to Pirvamai. After returning to Vanna, we received this note. We heard a loud explosion today. Turned out it was at mom's factory. Someone blew up the office door and stole the suitcase with this month's salary. Then some strange people arrived and kept asking questions about the explosion and the theft. People say they must have been the KGB agents. No work again. I wish life went back to normal soon. And after reading this note, we can start to question the events of the timeline of the radius, as previously most of the notes did not seem to, at least at first glance, resemble anything we've done within the world we roam. This starts to question what reality is for us as Explorer 61. After we place the explosive in our world, unless by mere coincidence, how would the steel door blast open? We can start to connect dots at least into a singular theory that is actually quite commonly speculated within the Into the Radius community a mirrored world. This does start to raise more questions. If the KGB existed during this time frame, the original time frame we speculated before being between 2010 and 2015 could be dissolved in an instant. The KGB was established in 1954, but abolished in 1991. Now I do want to discuss this theory some more in another video. But let's continue and make sure to keep this theory in mind as we'll discuss it a little bit more in the video and in part three. So part three confirmed. After completing a few more side missions for the UNPSC, we are tasked with another high priority mission that leads us to the second to last place of the radius and by far one of the more terrifying ones, Kolkaz Zadia. The mission, A Farewell Feast, debrief reads, Your successful results compelled the UNPSC to provide you with another mission. Spatial-temporal anomaly detection at the former coal causes rated at 84.3%. Indications uncategorized sonic signatures. Required, explore the location and find the artifact. From here on out, the missions are special with their own oddities. This mission you'll need an AD-15 detector, canned beef, canned pineapples, energy drinks, chocolate bars, and grenades, all of which can be found near the drop-off location. The objective is to somehow acquire an invisible artifact that the AD-15 detector cannot detect initially, within a small village southeast of the shortcut to Kolkaz Zarya, is another incursion riddled with 
entities. It's a grueling battle as the new entities can hinder our movements and diminish our ammunition rather quickly. At the location, there's a party going on through the memories and from notes, it's a wedding. As you proceed, you'll see a note of assorted items I mentioned along with their quantity, as well as ash-clad figures stating the same thing, needing a list and attending a party. The note mentions assorted items I mentioned along with their quantity needed for the strange mission, and after the items are placed onto a particular table with a red cloth inside the home, the heart artifact will appear after a loud bang. and clumps of ash fall onto the picnic tables outside. Then it's time to head home. But first, let's discuss the new entities before diving into the artifact. The most notable additions to the atmosphere of the area are the new anomalies, the BTR and sliders. Now, immortality is non-existent, at least in hindsight, but immortality can apply to these entities and the BTR is one of them. This entity is exclusive to this part of the radius. Despite its dangerous 14mm auto cannon, it can be heard from a large distance away. The BTR is particularly indestructible and must be avoided at all costs. Theoretically, the BTR can be destroyed, but the amount of artillery needed to destroy this monstrosity is nearly impossible to acquire. As the BTR resembles its real life counterpart, its intelligence exists and it will pursue Explorer 61, more than often waiting for the Explorer to show themselves once again. And if you're stuck in combat with the BTR, smoke grenades can break the line of sight, but patience can also be a virtue. Now for sliders, our Lord and Savior Explorer 12 made this audio log regarding sliders. UNPSC Explorer 12 log 8-16 sliders. Sliders are tall, humanoid in appearance, completely black with white eye sockets and sporting the curious feature of a black halo around their heads. A few years back, we started encountering creatures that we call sliders because they move by teleporting across short distances. In most ways, however, sliders resemble fragments, humanoid features, sharp claws, highly aggressive temper. We're still not sure whether fragments evolved into sliders through reproduction or mutation over time, although the latter seems far more likely as we have seen no evidence of mating behavior among fragments. It should be noted that sliders are much more resilient than fragments. The first time I met a slider, it took me by surprise. The creature just wouldn't die. But sliders do die eventually. You just have to prepare for a long fight, not only by arming yourself, but also mentally. In the end, surviving in the radius is all about mental endurance. Maintaining a scientific curiosity towards the event and everything that we've seen and experienced since helps. So it's best to think of sliders not with fear, but rather with wonder at their origins. Now the sliders are by far one of the most interesting anomalies in the radius. Out of all the enemies, these are the most humanoid, but with an oozing black halo over their heads. Their textures resemble the fragments, and their nearly complete structures resemble the hand anomalies in Balothki and in the Tutorial Zone. These are the most cunning and aggressive entities within the radius, teleporting in an unpredictable manner to catch their prey. And when they teleport to their location, however, their texture, which again looks like the liquefied hands from the previous locations, seem to stretch distorting their bodies to the location they wish to move to, or in this case, warp to, it's interesting to think that it could potentially be a warp of their body into a liquid or particles in the air that transports them. The sound of this warp can also give this impression because it sounds like water in a way, but this is just something interesting that I thought of as I wrote this, but there's more to these monstrosities than meets the eye. There's a hum as they are either idle or deceased. I don't think there's much significance to this sound bit, but the only thing I can speculate with it is that there are clearly more advanced entities, possibly what a fragment could become if given the time to advance and evolve. The halo can represent an ascended state, clearly not benevolent, but enough to be considered the apex of the entities minus the BTR. If we could witness the fragments form into sliders with time, it would be an extremely worrisome experience that actually might be interesting to see. I don't know, what do you think of this? Now, if given the time, we can explore the radius of Kolkaz more, and if we stay in the southern parts and scavenge the homes, we can find yet another white-clad item, along with Katya's form in three different locations. First, the item is a teacup, and these are starting to become more common with the same beginning sentence, 
Holding it in my hands, I hear someone's forgotten thoughts, implying this could be any of the previous explorers or somehow connected to Katya's piece together mind. And speaking of Katya, here are three voice lines by Katya at specific locations inside Kolkazarya. I used to come to the river to think. Being near water helps sort things out, you know? The last time I was here, I was thinking about my little sister. She'd fallen in with a bad crew. Sasha was just a few years younger than me, but so, so different. Moody, rebellious, always drawing instead of doing her schoolwork. And she loved rock music. My sister didn't even get a chance to grow out of her angsty face. She could be so annoying, but I miss her. A mop of chestnut curls, a crooked smile, her drawings. She was talented. Yes, I miss her terribly. What was this, I wonder? I don't think it was anyone's house, it's too big. Though maybe it was some rich bureaucrat's summer house. A few of them had those. I think I'd like to live in a big house one day. Ironically, when I was living in our little apartment with my parents, an apartment of my own was the height of my imaginings. But after all this time in the darkness, I keep dreaming of a big house with big windows and lots of open space. Would you want something like that? When you get out of here, I mean? Do you dream of getting out of here? Returning to normal life? I guess we don't really know what life is like beyond the zone now. But what if it's just like it used to be? People living out their lives in houses big and small. Wouldn't that be nice? Physics wasn't my best subject in school, but I understood enough to know this isn't supposed to happen. Floating houses, invisible barriers that can kill you, and you coming back from the dead. None of this is supposed to happen. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad you're alive. But every time you die, <sighs> What I was trying to say is, what do you think happened? How did all the laws of nature just stop working? Was it aliens? Magic? A new weapon being tested by the Americans or by us? I've been thinking about it all this time that I've been trapped and I just don't know. Not knowing makes it harder to grieve and to make peace with what happened. There's no one to blame. Just terrible, terrible loss. My home, my family, my friends, my future. Don't you dare leave me too. Other than acknowledging and maybe even relating to Katya's grief in some way and worry about our combined situation, all we can do is listen, but also take note from her words and piece together more of the missing pieces that makes the lore of the radius such as her voice at the top of the floating home in the center of Kolkha Zarya. She confirms that we come back from the dead and even speculates the cause of the Pechorsk event, feeding us information that may deter us from our original assumption of an anomalous asteroid, aliens, magic, or a tested weapon. We will formulate more theories in part 3. And after reaching Vanna, another note appears in our pack and it states this. Sasha and Bolya are gone, killed in the explosion on their wedding day. No one has any idea who would dump a grenade at their place. I still can't collect myself. Damn, I can't imagine how their parents are coping with the grief. Feels as if Pechorsk has become home to some evil power that keeps bringing misery upon us all. More evidence points towards the mirrored world theory with this note, as we potentially take the lives of a couple of whom we have no connection to, but Katya has a single connection. Her sister, Sasha. What's concerning about the heart artifact, the description reads, This artifact glows and pulses. If you hold the beating heart in your hand, it sends warm waves all over your body. 
as if this is supposed to resemble a heart and after the note, if this is supposed to be a heart, it must be one of the two individuals who died from the grenade and I assume it would be Sasha and with their ever still beating heart. And after the completion of this mission, we unlock the final security level, nearing the end of the game. And after proceeding with the game further, we can acquire our next mission. The debrief for Kids Playground says, The committee appreciates your compliance with our orders. Your next task is to explore another epicenter of abnormal activity located in the rail depot. All artifacts collected must be delivered to the facility. Repairing our armor and acquiring more AP ammunition is recommended. Going back into Kolkata Zarya, at the train depot, there's children at play. At least their ashen memories, say. As we approach the depot, or in this case, taking measures safely away from one of the entrances to the compound, we can see that the place is riddled with mimics and potentially sliders and seekers. As we play through the incursion and defeat the enemies, we have to discover an artifact. Grounding around, you can run into a few children specifying the usage of lights upon train cars. After each train car has been flashed with a pocket lamp, a loud train horn can be heard outside and we can see a train manifest and move. Then our 8015 detector decides to go off. As we head out to the train, we can hear the detector get louder and we flash the rear train car, the hoop artifact appears. A translucent, flat, green ring. The moment the artifact is picked up, the train and its rail car begin to move on its own, with ash blowing from the front of the train, and if you stay in the train car, it will take you back to Banna. And after the completion of Kids Playground, we have quite a bit of downtime before we can take on the next mission, but also a note appears, saying, Another fatality reported at the train depot. The watchman was ran over by a train. They also caught some kids on the site, deadly frightened. They confessed sneaking into the depot, though I don't think they could get that train moving, could they? The thing was broken, rotting there for the last 15 years or so. What power could do that? More evidence of a mirrored world and more death. This note and the circumstances to achieve this outcome also raises some questions. How would the kid figures know the method to summon the train? Do they have influence on the radius? Maybe the radius took their imaginations into some kind of fruition? I am not sure, but regardless, this brought a new anomaly into the radius, similar to the BTR with its immortality, and it was connected to the potentially mirrored dimension. The power of the radius formed a new life and breathed life into the train elsewhere at the same time and moved it at the same time. As we proceed through the game, we have to play several side missions, some of which can lead us to the next and final location. So what better way than to collect these missions and explore an uncharted area north of Kolkar Zarya, the Pechorsk Castle. To spare us from whatever lies beyond the bridge, behind the closed gate, we simply complete any mission before us in the first part of the castle, but the whole area is already an absolutely terrifying part of the zone as the sky is covered by the radius anomaly, surrounded by its orange hue. Before the bridge is a safe house, and in that safe house, another and final white clad item, a camera. These white clad items retain what seems like memories. These anomalous items are the teddy bear from Balatki village, the flashlight from Pebjeda factory, the teacup from Kolkarzaria, and the camera from the outskirts of Pechorsk castle. As you hold and read the descriptions of each item, they begin with holding it in my hands. I hear someone's forgotten thoughts. Each seems to be tied to Katya, not just because it's a similar white clad figure, but each item is relatively close to one of her places of origin. The teddy bear relates to a promise, a sentimental value. The flashlight relates to a camping trip, the teacup being too hot, and the camera taking photographs. But the camera also states Sasha's name, more evidence pointing to Katya. The only question now is what is the semblance when it comes to Katya and these figures? Why are they in the game and why are they prevalent? Maybe we'll find some answers in the castle. The rich and powerful made this their home for centuries. When we came here on a high school field trip, I thought I could still smell the open hearth. The wine, the suckling pig, the blood. With not much for lords to do, and there's no war or political intrigue to amuse them. So blood kept flowing in their halls. They tortured and killed anyone who displeased them. To make an example of them, or simply for entertainment. Then, the castle fell into disrepair, and, anyway, the times were changing. The rich and powerful built themselves new palaces, 
This place stood abandoned for centuries. Though passers-by would sometimes squat amidst the ruins. Bandits, vagabonds, children without parents. A band of partisans stayed here briefly during World War II. They all died here. In the 50s, the Soviet government finally noticed the castle and turned it into a museum. And now, now this is all that's left. Can't smell the blood of past centuries anymore. Can't smell anything human. I wouldn't call myself religious, but maybe we're paying for the sins of the past. For all the sins of humankind. The final mission, Oroboros, which can be defined as infinity. The debrief of the mission reads, Explorer 61, the committee is inspired by your enthusiasm. The radius has granted access to the castle in the PSZ center. The phenomenon is and requires further research. Sufficient combat training is required. Now, it's highly suggested that Explore 61 brings a light and 8015 detector, a large surplus of AP ammunition, syringes, and a gas mask. This is the final bout. This is where Explore 61 needs to become a force to be reckoned with and prove their worth. A brief description of the castle, in short, is that it's a relic of the past. Something with the history dating back to 1540. The ruin was supposed to be restored from the Council of Pechorsk, yet it never saw that day. It could be because of the radius and its disappearing acts, because for some reason, the money for it just went away. This could also tie to the case that we acquired in the intrusion mission. Now, walking into the castle, we can immediately see a black figure in the position that Katya's white plane normally takes, only to find that it's Katya's figure yet clad in ash, but with her eyes remaining in her porcelain state. Upon breaking her form, only static can be heard, yet the subtitles read, If I'm assuming right, the next incident will take place here in the castle. Ugh, the door's blocked. How does it... Or maybe I just leave it alone. Hey, is someone in there? Making your way through the dreaded halls and underways of the castle is what feels like hordes of heavily armored enemies and a variety of anomalies with very few parts that have a small element of peace. And throughout the traversal of the castle, we see Katya's ash form three more times. And these are her words. The door opened on its own. There was a glimpse of light down the corridor, so I went in. But now it's all black. I'm scared to move on. I hear something moving in the dark. I followed a strange ray of light that came out of nowhere. As if I was in a dream, it led me up here. Just one look down makes me dizzy. And the haze. What is it? <coughs> you. Whoever you are. Thanks for leading me out again. Wait, what's that light up there? I, I thought the castle was closed. So, where are you leading me? Is it where the light came from? Ah, what's this? Nearing the inside of the castle and eliminating all of your adversaries reaching the top of the castle, the AD-15 detector goes off and simply sees a pedestal. Upon the usage of your detector, we enter the final scene of Into the Radius. But before we decipher the endings, we need to discuss two concepts. Katya, the god of the radius, but also the giveaway. Turn to the giveaway within the comment section. Say I love lore along with your questions or theories for the radius and whether or not you are on PC or Quest so I can get you these keys. I will decide on a winner on a YT community post and my Discord for those comment sections. Now let's get back into the lore. And thank you, CM Games, for providing the keys. Now, why is Katya's form different from her previous formations? Why is she clad in ash and not porcelain? Her dialect has also changed to just static. Why? First, Katya's form in these parts are now memories of a previous state as they reform the ash state after the memory concludes, similar to the previous ash figures. The way it reads also feels as if her and another explorer has gone through the same scenario, but she sees a white light in this process as they delve deeper into the castle, which could be the light from the haze anomalies? I'm not too sure. Each memory is what sounds like a near identical reenactment of our journey to the top. Why her eyes are white though is beyond me. 
but I have a small theory if her presence was true. These remnants of her are still forming, leaving her eyes and her voice, which hasn't been made into this ashen memory, as if time hasn't caught up yet in some way. But this is just a theory of why she remains this way. I'm not too sure, but however, upon further reading, it seems as if these memories are experiences firsthand from Katya regarding the anomalies that appear throughout the radius. One mentions the door randomly opening, another mentions a lit corridor turning black, which could relate to the black grass. The third mentions dizziness and the haze anomaly. The fourth reveals more haze, but also brings another perspective. She's seeing light within the castle as it's supposed to be closed. Is she somehow witnessing a events that we are doing in a different time because we need to use the AD-15 detector to, well, find the artifact. So it needs to flash. And the last one at the top before revealing the Grail anomaly provides evidence that she's being led by another person or entity, which could still be this white light. But what of the God of the Radius? What is the God of the Radius? Before diving into the final scene, one would imagine for the average new player, they would think the Radius has a mind of its own and has kept you and Katya hostage, something simple with a damsel in distress, making your efforts troublesome as you reach this final point. We can reminisce in our efforts and even more so if your difficulty is higher. Katya struggles, our fears, the hardships, the desolation, the loneliness. We can now confront the source, the god that has tormented us, and Katya. Freedom is within our grasp. If you're a new player, this is what you would think. But for the experienced ones, you'll quickly find out that it's just to be ripped away. You impressed us, Explorer number 61. You made it. All went according to the plan. What? What's that voice? So, what is it like being a hero, a savior, the a chosen one, or the destroyer? It was you who invoked the event, didn't you? Who are you? What is this place? Was it your plan? No, you did not. Are you upset? Uh, you could never be the one. Because there is no you. You are a mere echo of many people. An illusion. A composite image. Your dear Katya never existed, too. What are you saying? I am real. Please, don't listen to it. She is your personal motivator that led you to the center, the castle, me. Congratulations. You made it here. Iteration successful. I am satisfied. Should I reward you? Take this gun and make your choice. Kill her and you will be free to live an ordinary life outside the radius. No. Please, I'm... I'm so sorry I brought you here. I didn't know any of this until now. Kill me, and I will give her a human form. She will live, all her memories will come true. But you will vanish. Choose your reward, Explorer number 61. I... I don't think we can trust it, about letting you go. But please... I'd rather die than stay trapped in here forever. If neither of us is real anyway, we can't die for real. Don't be afraid to shoot. You can stop it all right now. What will it be, Explorer number 61? Do you want a name, a home, a future? Or are you going to play the hero and the sacrifice? You must understand that you can't harm the Radius. The work in progress here will continue. It's here where we can tear away at our minds as we have discovered several heart-wrenching details. Let's break things down. One, this is what we get by looking around the sky. There are eyes 
staring at us from the sky, while others speculate a saucer as it would connect in some ways to some of the documents in the game, yet I speculate it being the eyes that are the orb of the radius, not a saucer or an alien. This does not rule out the alien theory though, as this entire orb can be classified as an alien still, if that is the case. But what exactly is the alien? The crown figure? Katya? The orb? Or is it all of the above? And another detail, the sense of unexpected and confused betrayal from Katya. Katya is the god of the radius, is what you would think, and we can hear what sounds like her voice from the other ashen form, the crowned god, the crowned one, however you want to call it, the crowned, I guess. It's Katya's voice, just slightly modulated, and at some points it sounds like a mimic as it echoes some words, but words that differentiate from each other, many of which condescend us or mock us. What's slightly strange about the whole encounter is that if these are both instances of Katya, one is transcended, the crowned figure, and the other is basically mindless or has a sense of amnesia. The crowned god reveals that she is the radius. She started the event and that she is not real, that we are not real. But why are we here? Why set us through these missions, these trials? The Crown One says at the end that the iteration is successful and that the work in progress here will continue. And from that, we can immediately think to ourselves that we are an experiment or we're in a simulation. The entire journey is a lie. We never existed. But what was the simulation for? What was the experimentation about? Did other explorers get this choice? Are there even other explorers? Did we get this choice before? This everlasting loop never seems to break, but the crowned one gives us two options regardless for life. A true form, at least to our knowledge, anyway. Life for Katya or life for ourselves. Killing Katya relieves us and sets us free to live a life of peace, yet retain our memories as we go about the world. I... I'm finally free from this place. Thank you. Farewell. For one and a half million of this planet's years, the consciousness present in these words left beneath the Earth. It was waiting for something without knowing it. Sixteen years ago, it was awakened. Since then, it has been waiting actively. Explorer number 61 was released from the Radius one year ago. He was given a human form, an identity, a place to live and a place to work. There is a young woman by his side now. Her name is not Katya. He thinks about Katya more often than he would like. He thinks about the Zone as he goes about his work, his errands, his ordinary human days. There are questions he asks himself that he cannot answer. The consciousness present in these words is still waiting. And killing the crowned one relieves Katya and drowns us to the void. But she's happy. Her family is alive and well. The family she told us about. All the necessary data has been reported. Are you all right? What? What's happening to me? After he made his choice, something happened to me. I felt myself separating from the being I'd only just realized I was a part of. It said to me, although, no, it didn't speak. We were still connected. It let me know through impulses sent directly into my neural networks. An act of self-sacrifice has just been performed, and you are to be its beneficiary. Then I was overcome with vertigo and blacked out. When I came to, I was standing in a field. It was speckled with wildflowers that were brighter than anything I'd ever seen before. Blades of grass tickled my ankles as a warm summer breeze blew through the field. A girl of eight or nine grabbed my hand. Katya, come on. Mama and Papa are waiting. Go, go, I'll be there in a moment, I said, squeezing her hand before releasing it. She threw me an over-serious look. That look children sometimes get when they're trying to prove they're really <laughs> already adults. Then she shrugged 
and ran off. I spread out on the grass, face turned up to the sky. A single airplane traced a contrail across the boundless blue. Explorer number 61, wherever you are, even if you are only in my mind now, thank you. Thank you. Now, these two scenes are of our own decisions. One that we, the explorer, feels is right. But what if we don't like these choices? There is a third ending. We can simply end it all here, killing ourselves. And if we decide to take our own life, we can hear the blood curdling cries of a mimic as we take our final breath. As Aradius said, we were never real, never a true human being, a being made by this anomaly as we are a part of the Radius. Now I want to backpedal a little bit back to Katya and her ashen memories. The trip she takes as she wanders through the castles, it seems as if it's steps she's taken before the Radius began developing more of its anomalous phenomena, or at least the start of it. And as she reaches the top, it seems as if she can see the grail without the AD-15 detector we, as the Explorer 61, must use. She stood at the top with a pedestal and a strange artifact lying there, the grail. And the description of the grail reads, dazzlingly bright and raven black. Soft and hard, the grail attracts the eye and mind. It reminds of the mysterious nature of the radius more than anything else. This can be interpreted as the source for the radius. But if that's the case, what are the other conditions to starting this anomaly? Is it the connection to human touch? Is the grail the restart point and not through the previous endings of the game? Also, Katya has several renditions of her white form surrounding us when we pick up the grail. So what will that entail? Are these other versions of her in different dimensions? Now, Katya could in fact be the god of this radius, this simulation, as she could have been the benefactor for the beginning of the end simply by interacting with the anomalous item, the artifact, the grail. But why does this castle have this item? The castle has been around for four centuries according to this note, but it could have been older. Now this theory is a little off the wall, but if this artifact started here, what built the castle? What placed this artifact onto the pedestal? It's not like the other type of artifacts as they are eliminated green and this illuminates orange, but could the alien theory have constructed this castle that predates 1540 and hid away this anomaly? But if that would be the case, what would cause the anomalous activities? Is it through time that the anomaly starts to grow in power? And more anomalous, I guess? We never know unless they add more to the game or we find out in the sequel. Now, the lore of this game is absolutely incredible, I think. There are more things to discuss, more theories, more questions about the Radius, and I would love to hear your questions regarding to Into the Radius and what your concerns are in terms of the lengthy video. And I apologize for the length. But for sure, in part three, we will be discussing the entities in depth and like the fragments and mimics, along with more details about the third ending, the novel Roadside Picnic, the orb, and the most convincing, the mirrored dimension theory. There is more lore to the game, not directly connected to the story via the notes left behind, but a lot of them seem to be from journals that previous players have made. While I love this, it's not relevant to the subject matter unless somehow CM Games says it all exists. Uh, however, it just doesn't connect in some ways. I'm not sure. Into the Radius is a convoluted VR experience. It's a tough cookie to crack, but one that I've enjoyed trying my hand at cracking. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed ASMR Soul. It's not normally my thing, but uh, I love doing these things. Let me know if there's any other game that you would like lore on, and I hope you enjoyed the lore of the Radius. Any irrelevant and speculated irrelevant information towards the Radius can be made into a different video, so if you like this, make sure to tell me in the comment section as well as leaving a like. This is all findings and recordings from within the game's written and said lore. No other information has been given to us, yet a lore update has been said to be present in the future, so maybe I will try my hand again and play the game 
again when that time comes. For now, let's just discuss and have a civilized conversation. You might catch me streaming on Twitch, playing Into the Radius or other various games, so if you want to chat lore, come on by. I am down to debate and theorize. I will see you all in part three. And the other videos. Watch the other videos if you like to laugh. All right. Bye-bye.